Ego lifting serves no benefit to you for gaining muscle or strength. Hey everybody, I thought I would chat with you guys and gals a little bit about this. And when I make this statement, I'm not saying you won't get bigger or stronger while doing ego lifting. I'm saying that the ego lifting itself over using just stricter form with good ranges of motion has no actual additional muscle growth. Uh, and this is, a, again, let's define what we mean by ego lifting because some people say, oh, well, doing a power lift is ego lifting. Well, well no, not if it's legal with strict form. Uh, you know, example, a lot of guys, their regular gym bench press is an ego lift, whereas in a power lifting meet, what do you have to do? You have to lower the bar to your chest. It has to pause until the judges give you a press command, which might be a fourth of a second and the most I've ever had I've had to judge make me hold it on my chest for three full seconds before I pressed All right that's not ego lifting if the, there's any up and down of the bar so if either bar side of the bar dips down while you while you grind through it they disqualify your lift and if your butt breaks contact with the bench it's disqualified uh, that's pretty pretty strict right pretty strict you know, it's, and it's also strict even on deadlifts. On deadlifts, you can't hitch. You have to fully lock it out. So hitching means ramping it up your thighs. So people see strongman do that, but no, powerlifting, they don't do that. So just an FYI, just because you're lifting for a max is, is not necessarily ego lifting. What we mean by ego lifting is cheating and using bad form so that you can swing around a much heavier weight. Okay. Notice everything I do in, in this video here uh, in the background. This is all pretty strict exercises. Uh, you know, some of them are not 100% the most strict thing humanly possible, but they're all pretty strict, pretty controlled. Right? Every, everything is controlled here. Nothing is just swinging the weight around. Uh, and, and the things that we need to think about here a lot of times when people are just swinging a weight up, they're taking a ton of load off of the main exercise. I, and normally I would say, if you're cheating just a little bit, there's probably no disadvantage for the muscle itself, as long as that's the muscle that's reaching failure, okay? As long as that's the muscle that's reaching failure, then fine. I'm still gonna argue it's not optimal, but at least the muscle is getting, uh, you know, stimulus. But you'll see people who cheat to the point of where they are literally taking the muscle out. For example, uh, you know, when you see people cheat on curls a lot of times, they don't even do the bottom of the exercise, right? So they're already working the bicep less. Why? Because lengthened positions or stretched positions of muscles, so like the bottom of a curl, the bottom of a pull-up, that's where a larger percentage of the muscle growth occurs. Okay. Arguably, the bottom third of many exercises is the most important for muscle growth. So they'll come down and they, they don't even uh, go anywhere near the end of the range of motion. Like they're doing a half rep. And then they'll cheat it up and then curl their wrist back at the top, completely unloading the bicep. Now, if you do that with a little bit of swing only working the bicep through half of his range of motion and then completely unloading it at the top and then using cheat to do it, right? Your biceps may not be getting very much stimulus. May not be getting much. So you see that sort of stuff and that, that level is just, uh, is just stupid. That's not even ego lifting anymore. That's just sheer stupidity. Because you're obviously not even working the bicep. Why are you even doing a curl at that point? Uh, I'm not saying every isolation movement needs to, you need to try to isolate a single joint because that's not always the case. Right? We know certain certain muscles they're they're by articulated. So different joints work. But what we mean by the ego lifting is the swinging, the cheating, grinding under a weight in such a way that lets you you lock out reps that you're not capable of doing and doing multiple of them. Okay, so you shift under the load. You have the bar tipping around while you grind under it. Okay, when you're doing any of these these things, you're you're not really using the muscle, the primary muscle, to do the work. 
or you may be using one side way more than the other, which is going to create muscle imbalances. So what's the problem with it? People say, well, what if the muscle fails? You know, like if, if I do these exercises and, and that muscle still reaches failure, will I still achieve muscle growth? Yes, of course. You may be missing some of the important fibers. Um, even we've also made the argument, and I've used to make this on certain, using a little body English, that it may give you more eccentric overload. But I think that sort of eccentric overload has been uh, overrated. So to be honest, I doubt that it gives you any additional muscle growth over just doing a normal clean set to failure. Okay, probably nothing. So what are the downsides? Well, how about risk of injury? If we're cheating and swinging on all of our exercises, we're putting ourselves in a lot of positions over and over and over that simply have a higher risk of injury. And weightlifting should not be a particularly dangerous endeavor. But if we're swinging and cheating, we're probably using a weight that's too heavy for us to actually lift with the muscles. And sometimes when we get into those, those compromised positions, particularly if there's overuse or inflammation happening, our risk of injury is higher. Okay, so you're running the risk of getting hurt. Well, I can tell you right now, injuries absolutely negatively impact muscle growth. And not just in the muscle you're injured in, you know. A major muscle pull anywhere, not even a full tear. A major pull, just still a minor tear, can still impact your ability to train half the muscles in your body. Okay? pull a bicep or you pull a lat, you know how hard it is to train anything in your upper body? You pull a hamstring, can't even do a barbell row. Can't even bench sometimes with your feet on the floor. You got to put them up straight. <laughs> you got to do a floor press till it heals. So, you know, these pulls will set you back. Injuries set you back, don't get hurt. Furthermore, recovery. We cannot recover if we use as much as all the cheat work because we're loading the body with additional weight that is not even helping us. Right? If we're strong, we're already having to deal with a lot of recovery on our big exercises. Okay? If you're, if you're moving a lot of weight, your squats and deadlifts and things, maybe even your rows and stuff, are putting a lot of extra stress on your body already. We don't need every exercise to do the same thing to where we're using 50% more weight than we could ever actually move. Hey, it beats you up more. It reduces and inhibits recovery. And if we're not recovering, we can't train as hard, we can't train as much, and we can't train as often. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.